we have seen how we can create security groups when we were working with launching our instance and we saw how we can add the different sources of inbound traffic and outbound traffic. Here, let's dive a little more in depth and we're going to be looking at how security groups can serve sort of as templates for launching the security configurations for many different instances. Here you can see we have different security groups available. So if you want to work with an existing security group, you can just click on it, go over to inbound, outbound traffic, and add information about tags. Here we're going to be creating our own security group. In the security group name, this is going to be the group that this security information is going to be belonging to. We're going to be calling this web underscore app. The description is going to be web application security group. Let's define the VPC. The VPC is going to be the default VPC that we have. And here we have the security group rules. The inbound rules are going to be specifying what sources can come and get access to our data. So if you think about, say, running a web application, in that case, the sources are going to be basically any user who has an internet connection and he or she is going to be using the HTTP or the HTTP service to get access to our specific IP address. So if we have a web application, we need to make sure we add something like a HTTP and an HTTPS connection. Let's add another rule here. Go over to add a HTTPS connection this time. It's right here. And these are the two types that we're going to be specifying for the users that are going to be accessing this information. If we go to the source, the source means that this is going to be anywhere, meaning any user anywhere who has an internet connection is able to connect to our specific server. If we go over to custom, now we can specify a specific IP range which is going to allow us to specify what customers are able to access this specific server. If we go over to my IP, only my IP is going to be able to access this specific server. So here we're going to leave it as anywhere since we want anybody to be able to access this. Here for the HTTPS, we'll also leave this as anywhere. Here anybody is going to be able to access this specific server using the HTTPS service. Let's add one last rule. This is going to be the SSH rule. The SSH rule allow us to access this specific server using our command line and the command line is a very very important tool and a great way of installing service packages and working with moving around resources and attaching resources to our specific instances that we may have. So here we have added a SSH inbound. This is the specific port range and what you can actually do is instead of going down this drop down menu if you have the port ranges memorized you can just paste them here and you're going to be able to look at the specific port ranges and then it's going to catch the type that you're trying to specify itself. We have the protocol information and finally for the SSH as we were saying we have different information so here for SSH I want to make sure I have my IP as the selected IP so this is the IP that I'm going to be able to work with when it comes to SSHing into this specific system. There's one more aspect we have to configure, which is the outbound traffic. So usually there is no problem when you come to outbound traffic. So outbound traffic means this is going to be the sources coming out. What sources are you able to display? So you should be able to display to all traffic. And usually this is not a problem. And But if you want to specify something like HTTP or HTTPS, meaning that only the web application is going to be displaying information, in that case, you can do that selection here, but we don't need to worry about that for us. If you're wondering, all traffic is actually a setting available here as well. So if you go down to all traffic, see where it is it's right here, and it's going to allow you to basically have the same settings as the outbound traffic. Let's revert back to our HTTP. Let's go over to create. And you can see we have created our new group. Let's actually rename these groups here. So this is going to be our web underscore app underscore zero one. So what you can use here is 
the group name will sort of allow you to group many different security groups under a specific group name. So if you have web app 01, web app 02, web app 03, so on and so on inside the specific group name here. So you can use the web app group name and you can basically create a hierarchy where you store more of these web app 01, 02 underneath that. So this security group, we can do that as well. So here, this was our instance security group. So this is instance underscore zero one. And this is our default security group. So we're going to be typing something like def underscore zero one. So with that, we have created a security group for a web application. Thank you so much for joining here. And this security group will allow us to create and launch instances with the specific security settings that we have set for this security group and it's going to be allowing us to tightening the access to our servers to make sure that we have as much security when it comes to providing access to our servers to different users. Let's move along.